question of if this and the dead should be illegal. Now I know a couple what? of you guys. <laughs> Suey. Hey guys, your boy Sex the Sec Pack, and we're back with another reaction video today. Now this one here, we've had a couple on the channel, man. It's liquid docu series, violent backstory of the rudest diss track, Absabs tables turn now i'm not gonna lie to you that originally yeah i didn't even know this was out yet it's kind of a crazy coincidence i was gonna react to a certain track a few had suggested you know maybe able to figure it out but it just got snatched here there was like two or three uploads all of them got snatched within the, like within half an hour of me even just opening them tabs here to get ready to record them so ironically this was on one of the suggestions from one of those videos i can't lie to you like i can't this is this is one i want to see because We've been there throughout almost this whole situation. Absab, in my opinion, definitely one of the most up and coming guys in the jewel scene. You don't already know. If you saw my end of 2021 video, man, I've been saying for a while, man, Absab is the guy I wanted to see do a lot more, man. And he's come with a shock factor, we cannot deny. He's had a lot of shock factor when the tables turn, but he's had skill. People wanna, people, I'm uh, they wanna say, do you know what I mean? The skill's not on show there. We're gonna see what comes out throughout the rest of the year. But if you look where there, when L's down drops in them sort of tracks, then you know Abs has got the skill. So we're gonna see what's gonna happen. But enough waffling, we're gonna check this one out before we do. Make sure you smash that subscribe button if you're to the channel. Hit that post notification bell as well so you know when the next video drops. It could be your reaction video suggestion reacted to next. Make sure you go follow all my socials. Check out the Spotify playlist. And if you want some banging specially made discounts for you lot on Amazon, make sure you check both those links in the description box. And most importantly, drop any suggestions you want me to check out down below in the comments section. But further ado, the violent backstory, the rudest diss track, Absab, tables turn. Let's go. UK drill fans are going wild right now. After a West London rapper called Absab dropped probably the rudest three songs to ever come out. In today's video, we are going into the backstory of these three diss tracks, which will clear up a lot about why they are so violent. Let's get into it. So if you're not up to date, like I said before, West London rapper Absav just dropped three of the rudest diss tracks that ever come out. So rude and disrespectful that it's even opening the question of if this and the dead should be illegal. Now I know a couple what? of you guys- Nah man, nah I didn't even see this, what? That is even opening the question of if this- Should disrespecting the dead be illegal? Who even thinks of this? Respectfully, how are you gonna make- Brother, oh my days. If disrespecting the dead illegal, yeah, then what? If my disrespect, like some top tier R charge menace, yeah, I should go jail. Nah, man, this free speech collapsing behavior recently, I don't know where this is coming from. Disrespecting the dead be illegal, what's next? Like, what? Like, disrespecting so or uh, disagreeing with someone that's died as well should be illegal, like. Bro, come on, man. Like, this, I'm not gonna lie, man. I believe you should just be able to say what you want to say with it. There's reason, yeah, reason, reason, but come on now. Like, do you don't, nah, man, that's crazy. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. Rotted. So, even, even at every state, if you sit down about them, you go to jail. That's mad. In the dead should be illegal. Now, I know a couple of you guys probably have not heard the songs, so I put them on the screen now. Also, don't get twisted because people love to run around with the stories. I'm not saying disrespect the dead, I'm just saying. Like, I don't really think you should be controlling people on them sort of levels, man. That's a bit mad. But we'll be breaking them down and going through the history behind all of this. So the rapper who dropped these tunes is a rapper called Absav, who's from an area called Norfolk, at the edge of West London. And from the outside in, it doesn't look like the worst area. But Norfolk is home to Absav's gang, N-Gang. N-Gang is also part of a bigger gang across the London borough of Ealing, which is a collective of members from towns in Ealing called Southall, Greenford, and of course Norfolk. The reason they're called 156 is because the areas covered in the gang are UB1, UB5 and UB6 postcodes. 156 beef quite a lot of West London, especially its surrounding areas, but they are mainly into it with a gang from Rainers Lane, which is a 7 minute drive from Norfolk where Absav is from. But 156 are better known for their feud with another gang from West London called CGM, which is infamously the gang of the big rapper Digger D. I can't lie, seeing Kid Nerd yeah, I like the, the, the continuity I've been really studying that, like, I'm not gonna lie, but I like how he leads into like the other the other gangs and like, that. The way he's reading it smooth, man. Definitely one of them brothers when he was in English and he was reading of mice and men, like he was the brother that a teacher would pick to read it, because yeah man, he's got a good reading voice. 
Despite the beef between Rainer's Lane and 156 being more personal, most people are probably familiar with CGM and 156 issues, mainly just because CGM are much more well known than Rainer's Lane, with CGM rapper Digger D hitting mainstream type of views on his songs, and other members like Rack 5 and Horrid 1 hitting decent numbers as well. But a big reason to do with CGM's blow up on the scene was actually to do with 156. CGM burst onto the scene around 2016 to 17 under their old group's name 1011 and they blew up faster than any other group at the time, gaining millions upon millions of views in some of their first songs as a group. But one of the main reasons for CGM's blow up was due to a murder which took place in the beef between Rainer's Lane and 156 on April 11th, 20... Isn't that crazy though? Like, man's really like... So what, CGM really blew because of someone else that got killed by, by someone else? Like, it wasn't even they were involved in it, but they blew because of it. That's kind of crazy when you think about it. So neither side... Like, Ray didn't even benefit out of it. Like, one has obviously lost someone, they loved it, and then CGM just capitalised. That is some, like, that's some mad, that's mad. That's, like, counter-attacking the situation. Like, how do you even, how does that even happen? And this, oh, that's mad. 2017, a 156 member called T Wiz barely even just walked out of his Norfolk home until he was approached by two Rainers Lane members. T Wiz was... What? He just walked out of his yard and straight away he was, like, they just got on sighted. Is that the situation? I've never actually really heard, other than like, I've seen one thing about the court said, obviously like, he was he bleeding down the alleyway, I think something like that, but I don't actually know, is, did he actually like, leave his yard and automatically just got on sighted? Because I can imagine his family members probably would have heard it, well, that would have been tragic for them to see him pass away, man, rest in peace, man. That's mad. And just walked out of his Norfolk home until he was approached by two Rainers Lane members. T Wiz was heard arguing with the two Rainers Lane members before he was stabbed in his stomach. The two attackers then fled the scene, and sadly, T Wiz died later that day. CGM blew up a lot on the early songs due to this death, with CGM mocking him in every song, making the name T Wiz a well known name in the UK just off his death. CGM wow. even mocked T Wiz so much that members were even banned from saying his name in any future songs. One of the killers of T-Wiz was a Rainer's Lane member called T-Rose and him and the other guy actually managed to beat the murder case due to self-defense. After beating the case, T-Rose then went on to make a drill song about the murder while also recreating the scene of the murder in the music video. I've never seen his actual full video. I've just seen that bit where they did a the little bit of the reenacts. I just know they're running in some underground garage. I've never actually seen the whole video. Is it even a good song? Like, let, let I want you lot to let me know in it, car. I don't know if I'd feel cool reacting to this, I'll be real with you, but yeah, let me know if it's actually, like, genuinely, genuinely, is this actually a good song, is it just pure disrespect? Video. And even while years went by after T Wiz's murder, 156 members were still out to get him. T Rose moved around three hours from London to a small town called Telford. 156 caught wind of this and rid out three hours to Telford, called Man. T Rose and shot him to death three years after the murder of T Wiz. Two hours before T Rose's death on the 13th of October, back in London, another batch of 156 members were also driving around Hayes with a shotgun and revolver, looking for members of another rival gang to 156 called Purple Haze. When they spotted someone who allegedly had links to the gang called Shaq, the members in the car then proceeded to shoot Shaq multiple times with the revolver, sadly killing him on the scene. The car was then dumped, doused with petrol and burnt a few miles away from the shooting. Fuck, man. Yeah, rest in peace, chat, man. So was he? At, I'm, I'm assuming from what Kid Nurse saying, he wasn't a member. This is what I'm saying. You never take everything literally. Do you know what I'm saying? Because there's always their side, the other sides, and the truth. Do you know what I'm saying? But that's if that is true, that's kind of mad. So yeah, just affiliated, got him caught. That's kind of mad. The car was then dumped, doused with petrol, and burned a few miles away from the shooting. Five people have been charged with this murder so far, including a 13-year-old boy, but are yet to go to trial. Ab what? I don't even know if I could red card the parents for that. Like, I don't think any parent would even, even, nah, man. Even the worst of parents would see their child going down them sides, and they would stop it. They wouldn't just let the child loose like that. 13. 13, bro, at 13, I was trying to save my lunch money to pay, like, I was about FIFA 12, bro. Are you mad? 13, with a, with a, with a M. Charged with this murder. Oh, wait, is he actually charged with the M? With petrol and burn a few miles away from the shooting. Five people have been charged with this murder so far, including the 13.
charged with shooting. So he actually got an M charge. Oh my days. Year old boy, but I yet to go to trial. Absav mentions both T Wiz and Shaq's murder in his Table Turns One song, saying 24 hours two got dropped. And even at the start of his second diss track, he mocks T Rose by pretending he's a skeleton. The reason for this was because a couple years back, CGM member Horrid One mocked T Wiz by pretending he's a skeleton of him. See, a year before the double murder of Shaq and T Rose, the tables are very much turned in this feud. Now if you listen to CGM rapper Diggity's tunes, you'll probably hear or see him mentioning a guy called Jojo, or you might have seen him with a diamond ring with the words Free Jojo engraved in it. Well Jojo was a Rainer's Lane member, he was getting into it heavy with 156, so much that the feds had to relocate him more than an hour away from Rainer's Lane to East London and Ilford to keep him out of trouble after he caught a couple cases. But unfortunately, this didn't stop him from getting into it with 156 members which was clear on November the 18th 2017. On this day, Jojo left his Ilford home, carrying a black motorcycle helmet at 4.45pm and got a train from Ilford to Norfolk, territory of the 156 gang. He then met- Just so you don't know yet, yeah, Ilford to Norfolk is brazy bro. That is the definition of the one side of London to the other. Like past Norfolk, there's not even much more. Like you got like, you got like, I don't know, maybe like Hayes and you got Uxbridge and that. That's basically it. It's like 15 minutes car. Ilford is like the same on the other side of London, bro. From Ilford, yeah, there's not much more past Ilford to East. Then you start looking at like, I think, I think Ilford's even further than Newham. I think he is. I might be mistaken. Even, they're either one side of each other, but like past that, you just got Dagenham and Essex. Like, bro, that's easily, you know, in a train, that's easy hour and a half. Easily hour and a half, two hours on the train. One way. That's mental. Dedication, that's fucked. Can't even blame the Met for that. Can't even blame the Met for that. They tried. Met up with three friends and around 10 pm, with two mopeds and shanks, they started to circle around Norfolk looking for 156 members. Unfortunately, on some bad timing, some affiliates of 156 just happened to grab some drinks from a shop and were heading back to their friend's house to enjoy their Saturday night. When they got to a road called Newnham Close in Norfolk, which was the same road their friend T Wiz happened to be stabbed to death a few months back, wow. Jojo and his friends spotted the group and jumped off their mopeds to try to catch up to them. The 156 Five six groups split up and started running for their lives. But once Jojo and his friends got back on their mopeds looking for the group, they managed to spot an 18 year old called Jason Isaacs in a dead end separated from his group, which resulted with Jason being stabbed eight times from a sword and machete. Jason managed to get himself to a friend's house and eventually to a hospital, but a few days later, sadly, he was pronounced dead. The mopeds from the attack were dumped but later recovered by police, and once the forensic team investigated them, Jojo Jojo's blood was discovered on one of the bikes. Not only that, but when the feds pulled up to Jojo's house, they recovered the same puffer jacket, hoodie and helmet which was shown on the CCTV from oh. the attack. Jojo was eventually charged with the murder. But the so he held all the gums, he basically held it. That's crazy man. Oh, that's mad. Rest in peace man. Is it Jason the guy's name? That's so... You see a dead end thing? I don't even know what can, what can even go through your mind bro like in that situation like that's genuinely genuine that's the thing i just wish mercy on that person so car imagine you're in a dead end there's three men chasing you on two on peds like they've got all sorts of tools and that and you, you know you can't go anywhere it's just a fighting thing or you're just gonna have to hold it like and either way you're gonna really hold it you know what i'm saying and yeah to be fair he's a fighter though you know, he went to his boy's house tried to get help cool you know what i mean he fought for it he fought for his life man rest in peace man but that's crazy that the georgia guy was still holding the guns in there i'm surprised feds pulled up to Jojo's house, they recovered the same puffer jacket, hoodie and helmet which was shown on the CCTV from the attack. Jojo was eventually charged with the murder, but the only issue was that there were three more people to catch. The evidence was crazy on Jojo, but the feds didn't want him just to go down for the murder, but Jojo refused to testify against his friends, Man. and ultimately was sentenced to life with a minimum of 20 years. Just like T-Wiz, Jay was heavily mocked in songs, mainly from Rainer's Lane members, with no type of remorse for the two young lads which were lost and you could tell mentally this really took a toll on Absav who had just lost two of his friends. In the recent interview he just done with Fumes the Engineer he talks about how people were dissing his friends for years and back then for a lot of people it was all fun and games without anyone realising that certain guys actually lost a friend in real life. He goes on to say Fab this is facts bruv I can't lie that is facts like even in, even in YouTube comments I, I see people get into it a lot you know what I mean 
a lot of people knowledgeable on these beefs, even if they're not from areas, it's quite surprising. But at the end of the day, man, do you know what I mean? Someone's lost a son, someone's lost a brother. So in some cases, someone's lost a father, do you know what I mean? And people have lost friends, man. It's, it's, it's Pete, bro. It's Pete. But, but yeah, man. Carl, like, he knows what he's rocking this right now. I'm like, I'm not even chatting too much. I'm kind of fascinated. Without anyone realising that certain guys actually lost a friend in real life. He goes on to say that the reason he called these diss tracks Tables Turned because he was just replying to all the disses his gang has been getting for years. And when we actually look at the lyrics of his Tables Turned songs, you can see that a lot of disses actually go lyric to lyric with the same disses opposition gangs have said previously, but obviously just changed up to fit the agenda of his gang. But despite all of this, some people still think Abs have went too overboard. Talking about a lot of sensitive situations like a cgm member called ap's mum dying he then even goes into dissing big uk drill rapper russ by pretty much saying cgm can't try what they've done to russ with him dissing ap's mum a bit of backstory on this basically around two years ago just like absav drill rapper russ also dissed ap's mum in the group chat between russ and cgm members at the time russ was cool with cgm mainly because his right hand another drill rapper called taze is cousins with a couple CGM members. After dissing AP's mum, Russ had the show but after decided to go to CGM's block, thinking he's still cool with them. But the tables turned and CGM members robbed Russ for his chain. Man, for yeah. a period of time, it seemed like 156 on Russ. Is this where the beef with Russ and Taze came from? I'm so baffed about that. Russ were cool though, with a 156 member called Nito MB, even featuring on the remix of Russ's hit single 630. But once the song came out, Nito started demanding all over his socials that he wants the song to be taken down, which it eventually was. But despite these CGM and Russ disses, it's clear that Rainer's Lane was the biggest focal point on these songs, with countless disses towards them, mentioning situations like a double shooting on Rainer's Lane members in 2018, or when five 156 members ran into a kebab shop and shot at a couple Rainer's Lane members in 2020. But one of the most painful I seen that video somewhere, oh my days. I seen it somewhere, I don't know where it was. I was stunned, bro. The man was in the back, innit? There was that like, video footage of them in the back, two men running, and then another by the over the counter banging shots, bro. Like, this is this is getting crazy, bro. In a kebab shop. Boss man, you know, work sweat from like wherever you came from. Most of the time they're from Asia, as you know, but it could be any shop, innit? Even the Caribbean shops, even the East African shops, the restaurants and that. Man, them be working hard. Like, even the fish and chippies, Gary and, and Bob and them brothers there. And then you just pull up and just start banging it, bro. That's crazy. That means no one can get dinner for at least two, three hours, probably two, three days, if, it, if the feds really want to go, like, go ham forensics and that. To a kebab shop and shot at a couple Rainer's name members in 2020. But one of the most painful disses was on a situation that took place quite recently on the 11th of June 2021. A 15-year-old Rainer's name member who went by the name Jay Taps was on his way to school around 8.30 in the morning when he unfortunately bumped into a 156 member. In video footage which is way too graphic to post on him, you can see the two get into a tussle which ended with Jay Taps being stabbed multiple times and so in the blood of Paul in his own school. 8.30! Yo, 8.30, man. That's, that's, that's earlier than the 9 to 5. That's during rush hour. Do you know how crazy that is? I'll be stunned if whoever did it didn't get bad because that's rush hour, that's school run. That's prime time with people on the road, like just civilians and everything. That's nuts. 8.30. These men go to the same school, does anyone know? Like, I don't know how that even happens, how these two men could just buck each other, like, that's crazy. Close. This was literally broad daylight in front of herds of kids making their way towards school. After the stabbing, the kid ran away from the scene, with even builders who are working on the site nearby trying to catch up to the kid Man. until the police came. A 156 member called Slims is currently awaiting trial for this murder. He was also only 15 and was making his way to school, which is crazy Man. to think that this feud is running Man. so deep that school kids from each side are turning on each other. In Absav's second diss track, he even mocked Jay Taps for not making it to his sister birthday which is sad to know that somebody so young lost their life to this feud just before j tap's death he was seen in a couple pictures throwing up gang signs and literally just a few days before his death he was seen in the rainer's lane music video called for real which would have made Wait, him what a few days days before his death he 
People seen the couple pictures throwing up gang signs, and literally just a few days before his death, he was seen in the Rainer's Lane music video called For Real, which would have made him a target for 156 members. Apart from Rainer's Lane, Absav also takes a dig at pretty much half of West London. Areas like West Drayton, South Acton and Wildstone, who are all lesser known areas to have conflicts with 156, which really makes you deep how much beef 156 actually have. But I want to know what everybody thinks of these tracks. The people think Absav went too far on these, but the people think it's justified due to the previous mocking of his friends. And most importantly, the people think these tracks are even worth it. It's definitely got the whole community talking and hearing about Absav, which could work to his favour in his future career. But with the police taking down his songs, his YouTube channel and even his TikTok, he's nice. probably gonna have trouble in the future making any songs without them being taken down, with the police pretty much having control of what is allowed to be put out there. These tracks also might get him blackballed from the industry, with a lot of labels and shows not really wanting to get involved with controversial artists which can mess up their brand which may even prevent other artists from one do you think as well yeah i don't know if it's just me thinking this but do you also think like with the amount of this is absolutely dropped here and it's obviously he jump being one of the main receivers of that the main collections and them and there yeah do you think that labels that work with digger work with them brothers they work with people that digger works with as well like do you think they i don't know how the scene works but i'm assuming people's feelings just get hurt easily in it in this world so I don't know, do you think it's going to be a thing, he'll even get blackballed from labels just because they worked with Digger or they work with Digger or anything like that, just because they don't want to have that conflict on the brand. I don't know how it is in the jewels thing, I don't really look into the labels thing too much, but just, just food for thought, innit? it? It's just food for thought with controversial artists which can mess up their brand which may even prevent other artists from wanting to work with him also i do think absav is a very talented artist and if he plays his cards right he could capitalize on the boost of clout he's now got but if he doesn't he's in danger of letting these tracks overshadow his career it's been your boy kid nerd and peace out i've partnered up with atlas vpn all right saying that was it a vpn thing yeah yeah we can't leave it there man we can't leave it there still i can't lie man kid nerd did well on this one still definitely did well Good, good consistency in that. Interesting, man. Obviously, I hope you lot got your beverageinos. I usually tell you lot to get your beverageinos before the before the video, but fortunately, man, I was lacking today. But yeah, this one, man, good detail, man. I, I don't know how much of this is true. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm not a speculation speculator, but you know what I mean. If I was a journalist in my time, I could I could give you the info. But unfortunately, I, I don't I got I don't have it. I don't have it for you. But I'm gonna leave it there, man. Listen, if you enjoy the video and you like these type of videos, make sure you like, comment, share. Smash the subscribe button and hit that post notification bell as well. So any suggestions, like these videos down below in the comment section and check out the Spotify playlist and my Amazon discount link for you lot in the description box. Without further ado, it's your boy Sex, a set pack, and I'm out. Sure.